It is her life's mission to serve the Lord and be an example to the next generation. Sister Ayers has an affinity for young people and hopes to bridge the gap between them and God, letting them know that it's okay to be different. Let's put our hands together and receive her at this time. Started, I want to give honor to District Missionary Reva Danistor, Pastor Reva Danistor for the invitation. I thank you. I thank God for Superintendent Shelton in his absence and First Lady Morning K. Shelton. God bless you. I thank God for my pastor being here, Pastor Tanya Ward and Deacon Ward. I thank God for my mother being here, Pastor Wheeler and District Missionary Harris and Mother Forbes and Everyone's here. If I forgot your name or your title, please charge it to my head and not my heart. Everyone is important, and I'm grateful that you're here on today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be in and out very quickly. As time is far spent, and Lady Shelton already gave us the word. We <laughs> thank God for the word of being real in the theme on today of having a relationship, and I appreciate everything that I heard and um, learned from today. So just to jump right into it, my scripture is coming from the book of Hosea, verse 6 through 11, and then jumping down to verse 13, and jumping down to verse 16. So Hosea 4, 6 through 11, 13 and 16. I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priests. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The more they multiply, the more they sin against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin offering of my people and set their heart on their wickedness. And it shall be like people, like priests. So will I punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They will eat but not have enough. They will play the prostitute but not increase because they have stopped giving heed to the Lord. Prostitution, wine, and new wine take away the mind and the understanding. Verse 13 says, they sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn incense on the hills under oaks, poplars, and terebinths because the shade is pleasant there. Therefore, your daughters play the prostitute and your brides commit adultery. Verse 16, and our last verse, for Israel is stubborn like a stubborn heifer. Can the Lord now pasture them like a lamb in a large field? Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. If I had to give my message a title, it would be, Don't Go Back to Your Old Ways. In the book of Hosea, just a little background history. In the book of Hosea, God used the minor prophet to speak to the Israelites who began worshiping idol gods and committing both idolatry, which is to serve false gods, and adultery, which is sexual sin. The people, along with the priests, began to sleep with prostitutes and perform ungodly acts as a sacrifice to their false gods. It had gotten so bad that God used Hosea as an example to the people. He had Hosea to marry a prostitute named Gomer to demonstrate Israel's unfaithfulness to God. As, he, as she was unfaithful to her husband, so was the people unfaithful to their God. And God often uses examples. And while I was reading this, I said, Lord, I don't want to be an example in that way where I have to come into relationship with someone who is not of you so that I can show the people how to go through. Because God works in that way where he'll make you an example to the nation. It doesn't, really feel, it doesn't feel very good. And as I was reading, I said, my goodness gracious, my, my answer is eternal yes, but I don't want to have to say yes to that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the people turned their back on God and stopped noticing him. And the theme on today is women intentionally noticing God. The definition of notice is to observe or pay attention to something. It also means to become aware of, to take heed to a certain matter. To be intentional means to be done on purpose and to be deliberate. Women, and there's men here too, there is a call on our lives to be aware of God in such a way that nothing else can take our focus. 
We're living in a time where there are so many people falling away from the truth and falling out of relationship with God. They've heard the preachers, they've made their vows to serve him, they've even learned of his ways, but somewhere in their life, somewhere along their walk, they've perished. Verse six says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they won't know better, they can't do better, and they fall away. They rejected the knowledge and the truth of God and have stopped paying attention. Their eyes have dimmed and their ears have become blocked. And for whatever reason, and there's so many of them, they become stubborn and a stiff-necked people. And the things that are of old, we still can see today in the generation of now. We've gotten comfortable doing just enough. We've become comfortable picking flowers. In verse 16, it says, they sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn incense on the hills under oaks, poplars, and terebinths because the shade is pleasant there. We've made a picnic out of our religion. We've turned it into a bed of ease and we offered up sacrifices in, place, in places that welcomed our sin and made us feel good. So often it's easy to come into church and know how to dance and know how to jump and know just when to say amen and know just when to shout out, but there's no relationship and it's become an act and it's become a performance. And people have come into the house of God and performed in front of each other to upkeep the relationships with one another. Because if I come in with my head down, because something went on at home, and if I come in and I be real, you might judge me. So I have to come in and I have to clap my hands so that you can see it. I have to come in and I have to shout so that you can see it and you can be comfortable. But my heart is broken. And my relationship with God is gone. And I've lost the savor of my salt because I got out of relationship with God and I paid more attention about relationship with people. And as everybody said, it is very important and it's essential in our lives to have relationship with one another. But the first and foremost relationship that is needed is with God. That is the most important one. And if we don't have relationship with him, we cannot sustain the relationship with others. That's right. Amen. 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 And we've turned it, we've made a picnic and a show out of our religion. And we've made... It seems so pretty, like the Israelites did at this time. They did these grand gestures, and they made up statues, and they made up temples for the, their false gods and for Baal, and they made everything look really nice and very pretty and put together, but their heart was far off, and where they couldn't hear God, and they began to do things that made them slip back into sin, and they put, were put into a backsliding condition. And often our churches have become these places of just, just a gathering and where it's just a building. And it welcomes sin. And I know people say, come as you are, you should. And like Warren E.K. Shelton said, Lady Warren E.K. Shelton said, you do come as you are. And as you walk this walk, those things begin to fall off. But it has gotten to a place where we don't even charge the people to change their ways. We don't even teach them. And because we just want our seats to be filled, we allow any and everything to go on in the church. It's so true. And now any, there's all kinds of religions. There's all kinds of gods. And the theme and the generation that's going on now, they put, it's not Baal anymore, but it's crystals. And now you serve a crystal and you hold a crystal that'll bring health and you hold a crystal that'll bring peace. So or you got you reach your horoscope and that's become your God. Mm-hmm. Or because you manifest and you chant these things in the morning, that's become your God. And so many things have gotten in the place of God that he has been completely wiped away. And we're back in the state of Hosea's time with the Israelites. But where are the wailing women? Where are the fervent prayers of the saints? We've made room for sin because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. And so often we say, I don't want to fall out of relationship with this person but their sin is so great and their heart is so far off that they don't want to change. So then it becomes on us, I either die for you or I die for Christ. And every time I'm going to pick Christ, every time I'm going to choose my relationship with him, even if that means I have to walk alone, even if that means I have to be by myself and I have to be in a season of closure. Who is keeping watch? And where is the standard for holiness? The conviction is gone. 
and we've taken down to the enemy because we simply forgot. We forgot to uphold righteousness. We stopped noticing God. But because God is faithful, we still have hope. We still have a chance to get it right because he loves us. He's always wanting to hear, to, uh, hear us. He's inclined his ear to us, and he wants to hear us cry out to him. He wants to hear us praise him and communicate with him and have a relationship with him. We still have the opportunity to stand flat-footed in the gospel and to declare the goodness of the Lord. We don't have to give ourselves over to spiritual prostitution and serve other gods and make idols of the things in our life. And like I said earlier, those idols could be horoscopes because that's the gen I'm thinking of the generation yeah. that is now. Oh, we don't. Yeah. It's 49 and under, 49 and over, but around the age of um, 25 and under, it's a new phenomenon where you read your horoscope every day, and then Mercury's in retrograde. That means you can't go out. Or if just a bunch of it's crazy stuff, but they'll follow the paper of the stars. The paper of the newspaper will tell you what the, what the stars are saying. And if you're a Pisces, you do this, or if you're a Scorpio, you do that. And that dictates your personality and dictates what you do and say. And the other gods of this generation, where they hold on to these man-made up things. It's such foolishness, but it's the same thing, because there's nothing new on its son. It's the same thing that happened during this time, where you erect these large statues and you serve it. And whatever, whatever you want to be an idol in your life, you can easily make it an idol. And that's what happened during this time and in the time of today. But relationship is so important. We have to be intentional about our relationship with him. My quick testimony, because my time is well spent. My quick testimony is I got saved when I was 16, and I got the Holy Ghost when I was 22. <laughs> no, that is a big gap, it is. <laughs> I recognize that that's a large gap. But I believe it, it took place because that's what God had for me. And also, being saved at a young age, I still had maturity to go through. I still had to grow up. And I um, had to do a lot of learning. And I, you know, when you're 16, you want to be saved. And I was adamant about my salvation, but I still had to go to school with unsaved people. I had to go, out, go to college and go out of a home around unsaved people. I had to live with unsaved people. But it wasn't then that it kept me from getting hold of. My heart wasn't healed. And my heart wasn't in good relationship with the people around me and with God. I chose to not 16 and I, I never loved them, but I wasn't able to be healed completely and get the Holy Ghost until I was 22. People often forget just how much young people go through during this time. And I think older people figure, because you don't have any responsibilities, you don't have anything to worry about. But there's a lot of things that young people worry about that we don't even know. And the things that cross the minds of young people, we can't even fathom, because every generation is different. And the things that they face are completely different. Amen? Is that okay? I was very sheltered as a child, so I didn't do a lot of the things that other people did. I was always at home, and I didn't party, and I didn't drink, and I think a lot of people feel as though I can't relate to them because I didn't do the acts of sin, but there was still sin in my heart. I was mean, and I was bitter. I was broken, and I just, I needed deliverance. So when I talk to people, they're like, well, you didn't do this, and you didn't do that. I didn't do those things, but that doesn't mean that I can't relate to a sinner. Right. Because my heart was in a posture of sin, even though my body and my acts and my flesh did do it, my heart was far away from God. But it's a wonderful thing because he delivered me from those things, just as he could deliver somebody who was out on the street. He could deliver somebody who was in the clubs, who was drinking, who was smoking, who was having sex. He's the same deliverer. Yes, he is. So we all can relate to one another, even if we don't have the same conversation. And I asked him, and I continue to ask him to keep me because it's, I always want to notice him. Our church mother who passed, her name was Mother Simmons. She would always have these sayings um, that she would repeat continuously. And we would make fun and we'd laugh because she would say the same things. But those things stuck with us. And one of her sayings was, I asked the Lord to give me a determined mind to serve him. And that particular phrase, along with a lot of the other ones, but that one in particular really stuck with me from my youth until now. And it's still my constant prayer to have a determined mind to serve God and to be intentional about my walk with him. 
Women, we don't have to go back to our old ways. We don't have to ignore the call on our lives. God has made us free and purposed us to do the work of the Lord. Because he was mindful of us, we have a right to be mindful of him. Don't allow the enemy to trick you out of what is already yours. Don't allow peer pressure to determine how you serve God. And peer pressure can affect every age group. That is not just a young person right. thing. Peer pressure can affect somebody who's 2 or 92. That's right. So don't allow it to, don't allow peer pressure to dictate how you move in God. Don't allow the enemy to trick you out of what is already yours. For God said to be holy, for I am holy. And there's no loophole to salvation. There's no hidden doors or hidden access. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And how do we keep God's commandments? By staying in constant prayer, always seeking him for direction, being deliberate in our confession that, the, that God is the Lord of our life and that we will serve him with everything in us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. This young lady got up here, ministered to us. Can we stand and give her some encouragement here? I know we ate. We feel good. But come on. God is still good. I know we're in a different place, a different location. But wherever I am, I can praise God. I can be in a restaurant. I could be in the mall, in the grocery store. Come on and give God the glory for the word that we forward from our sister Agnes and she broke that word down, gave us good food to eat. It was better than the food that we naturally ate. Come on and take God for the word of God. Amen. Yes, we got to celebrate our sister because that's healthy. Because God expects us, requires us to encourage somebody else. Amen. It's not easy to get up there it's not easy to get up there, but she did it, and she executed the word. Amen. And I celebrate you, sis. God bless you for that timely message on this morning, this day session. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Have you been filled? Yes, I pray you have. And so at this time, we're getting ready to receive an offering because David said when he went to the threshing floor and uh, Aramna said to him, listen, King, you can have this threshing floor. He said, I dare not take anything from God and not pay for it. And we love free, but amen, it does cost something, amen. And so we're just asking for a love offering, amen. If everybody can get a seed of $25 or more on this morning, yes, we're asking that you do that if you can. If you can meet me with a $50 seed, come on and sell a $50 seed because some of us can sell $50. But if you can, if you can do $25 at the bare minimum, we're asking we've eaten good, we fellowship with one another, and so we've had this beautiful space. Uh, to be in dying with and it is a cost with it and so if you're online you can cash that dollar sign uh, goodwill the letter D as in Delta um, women goodwill the letter D as in Delta women alright goodwill D is in Delta women you can do that if you want to cash that and give electronically and if you're going to give uh, cash or any other means. You can make out checks to Goodwill District and also you can give cash, amen. And so I don't know, Pastor, how do you want to handle cash? You want us to know how to go around? What do you want us to do? Okay, all right. Pastor D is going to go around and just collect our offering uh, if you have cash on you. So we want to be a blessing to this work, to this ministry, and to the Goodwill uh, Women's Department. We want to be a blessing. Ladies, are you getting re ready for tonight? 
Amen. Are y'all getting ready for tonight? Oh, I need to have some more life go well. Are you getting ready for tonight? All right. Yes, we are getting ready for tonight. It is Women's Day. We are getting ready for tonight. We're expecting a mighty move of God. We're expecting our district missionary designate, Pastor Reed Badanasaur, to bring us the word. Amen. On tonight, we're looking forward to what he's going to say to us. And so we are coming in full force tonight, getting ready for the word and celebrating with our sisters. It's so good to see all of you out on today. I know it's raining outside, but showers of blessings. Anytime I see rain, I say, God, you're showering down your blessings. And so we're excited about that on today. We have been here. We have fellowship. We have... Um, embrace one another. We have learned from each other. We are growing with one another. This um, ministry wing, as um, Pastor uh, D had in her vision, is so that these women, these younger women, 49 and under, can come under the wing, amen, and show that we are women intentionally, intentionally noticing God. We are doing, we're going after God with everything inside of us. And some of us may not be 49 and under, but guess what? We're still young at heart. We're still 49 in our heart. We're still running. Anybody still running for Jesus like you did when you was 40, 30, 25? Come on, y'all. Y'all gotta have some life. Women who are 49 and under got life. And if you want somebody to think you're 49 and under, you need to get up and give God a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise. We're getting out of here. We're wrapping it up. But I just believe in praising God just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The ticket was good. The rice was good. But I just believe that he's even better than that. Anybody believe like me today that he's better than that? Come on, ladies. spiritually. God, we thank you for another time and for another opportunity that we've had to come together and to fellowship. We thank you, God, for just being God in every single thing that you do. And now, God, as we leave this place, we ask that you give us traveling mercies. And when we arrive back at our homes, let us find them just the way we left them. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 